Welcome to Unwrap Your Mind. My name is Maria Plahl and today's episode will be about how I came to Sweden and how I made it. And I know that a few of you asked me about how did I end up in Sweden and why, why did I came here. And I also know that a few of you yeah, were, were curious how that how that dream that I had worked out and that's what I would like to share with you today. Yeah, um, there are two news that I would like to share with you and one is that I really, I really love books and books for me are inspiration and books are like pure inspiration, books yeah, books just trans yeah, bring me to another dimension maybe. And I would like to leave a book recommendation here. It's about yeah, creativity and for everyone who really likes to be creative and who is feels like there is some creative part in them. I really can recommend the book of Elizabeth Gilbert, Big Magic. And one part was also which inspired me to now come to the next uh, news to the second one which is that I realized that creativity for me it's something that wants to come out and I would also like to use that podcast as a platform for my creativity and how I would do that is that I just yeah create something that just comes from from that moment and today I will not speak fluently just right from my heart I will read something out and yeah the last few days when I was in Stockholm I wrote some lines some pages in my journal about my path to Sweden and this is what I will read out to you and I hope you you enjoy it and that you just enjoy to listen to that and to be yeah just curious about all the creative things that might come up and I think creativity is something that just wants to ex be expressed and everyone is doing it in their own way so let's all come out with our creativity and just be curious so enjoy that and what I also would really love is since I yeah since books inspire me if you have any book that inspires you you can just leave me a comment underneath my post yeah let me know what kind of book is inspiring to you and yeah let's just start now and enjoy it a few few pages about my journey to Sweden I was not quite sure how I should name it if it should have a title or not I will just call it following a path where did this journey start when I ask myself the question then I realize that I cannot answer it with my mind I can tell you how I drove to the airport in Munich. I can tell you how I entered the plane to Stockholm. But that would not explain what my heart connects to this journey. And yes, journey. Because it's been not just a trip. It's been not just entering the aircraft. It's been a whole journey to Sweden. A journey that already started years ago. It might have even started started way earlier than I now remember. It did for sure start with a seed that was sowed in the earth and that started to grow. It started to become bigger but still invisible for everything that existed above the earth crust. But this seed for sure took quite a journey through all the earth layers until it reached that very moment. That very moment when this seed that already turned into a plant 
reached the earth crust. It was sitting there, ready to become visible. And that moment was around three years ago. The moment when I started to think about a master abroad. I don't remember why Sweden, but I do remember that I looked at the website of a business school in Stockholm. As quickly and unpredictable this moment appeared, as quickly it disappeared as well. And then this idea slept for about a year. It is like this idea of living in Sweden slept underneath a thick layer of snow, like a beautiful spring flower that waits until the rough and cold winter is over and until it's time to finally bloom. This rough and cold winter was the time at the end of my bachelor degree. The time when I went for a tough sequence on my personal and spiritual journey. So I finished my bachelor in February 2019. Already in the end of that degree, I applied for a master in Stockholm. It's like I put all my energy together, collected it and put it in that little seed, that little plant that desperately wants to flower. Fail. It didn't make it through this layer of snow. Not this time. So I took another attempt. This time for a little detour. It worked. What am I talking about? What attempt? What detour? Okay, let's go back a little bit. Of course, the seed that will turn into a beautiful flower is just a metaphor that represents the wish of mine to move to Sweden. To make it short, let's go back to that moment when I first realized that I want to live in Sweden. To be honest, at that time I had no clue why I wanted to do it. It was just a beautiful, warm feeling which I from now on followed. I applied for a master which didn't work out last year, but even if I was so disappointed, I didn't drop that strong wish. Instead, I started another master program in Germany with the intention of moving to Sweden in 2020. I don't know exactly the exact recipe that I followed to make it become true. What I do know is the fact of trusting into this dream. I also experienced the immense power of decision making as well as a strong power of imagination of the feeling of achieving it and following it. So I imagined how I would most likely feel like if I live in Sweden. And then I connected to that feeling over and over again. I mean, I had a plan, like a backup plan. Things don't just appear out of nowhere while sitting comfortable on your sofa. This plan I am talking about was to apply for a semester abroad in Sweden. Or, if that doesn't work, to apply for an internship in a Swedish company. Or even to apply for another different master program. I worked on all of those three plans. As plan A with a semester abroad didn't work out, I set the cards on the other two options. But to be honest, none of those options that were connected to this master in Germany felt right. That brings us to the next step. I believe that very important step. I decided in January 2020 to not continue this master program in Germany. It felt not in alignment with what I would love to do for work in the future. Why I think that this decision has something to do with ending up in Sweden. Because I believe that we do have to close doors sometimes entirely so that another door can open. I don't believe that we always get the security delivered on a silver plate, ready to take it and then drop the old one. I do believe and experience that it is necessary to close one door completely, leave it behind, let it go, and then the next option appears out of the blue. The next step I took was that I went to Thailand. It was planned to stay there for two weeks. I went there in February 2020. In Thailand again, I needed to take several decisions, and the next most important one 
was to not leave the country after these two weeks that were planned. Honestly, I've got no idea at that point how I should manage that. I couldn't get the money back for this flight back home. I needed a job, otherwise I couldn't have financed it. And I didn't know why I had this intuition to stay longer. But I did stay longer. And again, I took that risk to follow that intuition and trust it. I'm super glad that I have this intuition and that I recognize this inner voice within myself. And I do know that this is not for granted. But to that topic, I believe we all have it and we can get access to it, as I did, since I didn't always have the strong intuition. So back to that moment when I decided to stay longer. That day after I made the decision, I heard the manager of the place at which I was staying talking to another girl about a volunteering job. I knew that this is my chance, maybe my only chance right now, to go to him and ask for a job. I did. I got this job. I got this job where I then stayed for free and worked at that restaurant at the beach. That exact same day, I met Ernie, an amazingly joyful and inspiring man. Through him, a couple of days later, I met Mark. One last important thing that now pops into my mind is that I always talked about my vision wherever it was possible. So I did this also when I started talking to Mark. It turned out that he was from the UK, but is living since about 10 years in Sweden. On top of that, he was from Stockholm. After I told him in a talk about my vision to move to Sweden this year, but still without a clue about the how, he told me about this place called Engsbecka, the place where I'm currently living at. One day before I talked with Mark, he saw a post on Facebook about one spot left in the ESC volunteering project at Engsbecka. This program he was talking about was supposed to start within the next two weeks. One thing to add to that whole story about meeting Mark. I saw him the day before already and he looked so familiar to me that I probably would have talked to him anyway to ask if we know each other, what we apparently never did before. There was no way we could have met before and there was also no one that comes to my mind to who he looks familiar to. Back to that moment when he told me about Angsbecker. I immediately applied for that position and I got that spot in a program that is financed by the EU. I think the so far last big decision I had to take was to decide if I book a flight back home for the next day or not, without knowing if I got admitted to that program. So I again decided. I decided to book this flight. And again, it worked out. On the same day, at midnight Thailand time, I got the message that I got admitted in that program. I flew back home the next day, moved out of my apartment, and exactly one week later, I was in Stockholm. I then realized that this was my only way to get to Sweden at this time of the year, probably. This current situation made it tremendously challenging on top of that, but I am more than happy I made it. Three decisions within a short period of time, all with the uncertainty of what's happening next. A lot of trust in myself and the universe, and my strong belief in my own vision made me realize it and let the seed grow and turn into a beautiful flower. At that moment, I am writing those lines. I am sitting in Stockholm, feeling super grateful and proud of the courage of myself and not sure where it will guide me next. I just know at that exact moment that I feel really happy, peaceful and trustful in my path for whatever path I will choose in life. I know that I will go back to Engsbecker tomorrow and I do know that I will move to Stockholm in late summer this year. How? I don't know yet, but it feels good and exciting. 
Looking back to these last months, sounds like it was so easy, but it was not. There were heaps of challenges, hundreds of moments full of uncertainty, full of fear, and even a lot of doubts from time to time. But I do believe that there's no right and wrong path in life. It's just a different path. We just need to have the courage to follow one, one after time, one step after another. One story I'd like to share at that point is about a woman who wanted to go to the sea. She heard it's beautiful there, and since she has never been to the ocean, she made this dream to a mission. Once she was on her way to reach the ocean, she came to an intersection. In front of her was a huge mountain with one small path on each side. She was then standing there. This huge pile of earth in front of her that cut off her view any further. And this important moment of making a decision of either going left or right. She didn't know which would be the right path since she desperately wanted to reach the ocean. Years passed. Moments passed. She sometimes asked passengers that passed her way if they would know how to reach the sea. They didn't know. Some of them would say, go left. Some would say, go right. She did follow their suggestions from time to time. But after walking for a while without reaching the ocean, she eventually returned to the intersection, hoping for someone to pass who would know how to get to the ocean. There must be someone who knows, she thought. But there wasn't a single one who could tell her for sure. Years passed and she reached the time of the end of her life. She then decided to just rest and leave Earth in peace. For that rest, she collected all the energy she had left and climbed up the mountain. Once she reached the top of the mountain, she could see the ocean. She could also see that both paths end up at the ocean. She now was too old to go there and too weak, so she spent her last days on her life on that mountain top. I don't remember where I picked up that story, but I remembered it ever since. Take one path, follow your dream, follow your interest, follow your curiosity and take one path once you reach that point of not knowing. There are tons of possibilities delivered to us moment by moment. Just jump on one of them and follow it. It's like being in a city with a good network of public transport. There are many possibilities to reach an aim or a destination. Just jump on one of the trains and get off when it feels right. Don't always take the same train back and forth. So this was my journaling from the last days about the story, how I came to Sweden. And I, yeah, I really hope that you now know better why I'm here and how I did it and hopefully it inspired you. It definitely was a lot of fun for me to record that and it was a wonderful experience to do that surrounded by thunderstorms and I'm very happy that there are so many ways to share creativity and I will explore further and yeah, see you next time. Thank you and bye bye.